Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, we're doing a comparison of the HTC One M8 up against the Google LG Nexus 5. Now, if you want to see some exact details of each device, like their exact measurements and stuff like that, you can find all that information in their individual video reviews, and you can find links to those video reviews in the video description. This is more of a slightly more quicker a comparison rundown between each device and you can find like other videos like their camera sample videos uh, gaming demo videos all the other good stuff also in the video description starting with the LED notification light on the Nexus 5 you'll notice that it's pretty bright and not only that they come in multicolor options if with third-party apps whereas on the HTC M8 it's kinda small and disappointing especially considering the large size of the M8 so in that regard, the LED notification light is better on the Nexus 5. Now when it comes to body design for the Nexus 5, it has a 4.95 inch screen and it's completely plastic all around and this isn't really a bad thing, it's fairly comfortable to hold um, and considering its size the weight is decent, although on the sides you notice that the edges are completely straight, they're not curved, not the most comfortable device ever held, but it's decent. Now when it comes to the HTC One M8, it has a 5 inch screen, but you know what? What's unique about this device is that apart from the screen, 90% of the device is covered in aluminum. And I have to say HTC made it quite elegant considering it's surrounded by metal. But this also leads to a few of the problems. You see the sides are a little slippery when taking out of your pocket, I mentioned this in the review video. Not only that, because it's metal, I assume that's why this device is rather heavy for its size. And of course, another thing that adds to its size is of course the dual front facing speakers. Overall, it's an okay device to hold, but a little large for a 5 inch screen device. Now as you notice side by side, the Nexus 5 is significantly smaller and not only that, it is lighter than the HTC M8. So in terms of mobility and comfort to hold, I have to give it to the Nexus 5. Now both devices have 1080p screens, and I have to say both of them look amazing. Of course YouTube does it no justice because YouTube compresses my videos like crazy, but putting them side by side in terms of color clarity, I noticed that they're both equally great. Um, even in terms of sharpness and even brightness level, I find them pretty equal. Now you're noticing that the Nexus 5 looks a little bit lighter in color, that's because it's cameras at an angle, so I have to give the screens a tie. Now when it comes to RAM, there is obviously a tie because both devices have 2 gigs inside. Now when it comes to processing power and general graphic performance, there is a slight difference here. You see the Nexus 5 has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, whereas the HTC M8 has a slightly upgraded Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor, both are quad core and they're both packing an Adreno 330 GPU. Now when it comes to pushing the performance and GPU of the Nexus 5, there's no problem whatsoever. When it comes to playing the highest graphic Android games possible, this thing handles everything with absolute ease. And it's a device that'll last you quite a long time. And the exact same thing can be said about the M8. Both devices have processing power and GPU performance that are outstanding. In fact, there's no game or no app that can actually push them to the limits in which they struggle. So in terms of responsiveness, processing power, and GPU performance, they're equal right now. However, the M8 will have this slight minor advantage in the long run because its processor is just slightly better. But you're talking about years down the line. For now, it's not noticeable. When it comes to connectivity, both devices have the same GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, Miracast, uh, Wi-Fi 802.11a, b, g, n, c, and of course LTE connectivity, but the HTC One M8 has a slight advantage. And that of course is the IR blasted on the top of the M8, which is basically allows you to use your devices or remote control for your TV and other various supported devices, and it, believe me, it works absolutely fantastic. Now when it comes to the rear cameras on each device, it's nothing special. The Nexus 5 has a 8 megapixel ca camera at the back, whereas the M8 has dual 4 megapixel cameras which HTC refers to as ultra pixel, which actually means nothing. It actually allows in more light in low lighting situations, which it has an advantage over the Nexus 5. And you know what? Both of them record at 1080p. However, the HTC M8 can record in 1080p at 60 frames per second, whereas the Nexus 5 can cap at 1080p 30 frames per second. Other than that, you know, the HTC M8 has some gimmicky features like a DSLR blurring of the background or foreground after a picture has been taken uh, has this 3D rotation effect, but all these effects are kind of artificial, more gimmicky if anything. The Nexus 5, however, it performs slightly better in good lighting conditions for video recording and picture taking, but again, there's nothing to boast about. Both cameras aren't spectacular. They don't allow for 4K recording. 
they're just decent at best. So the HTC M8 performs better in low lighting conditions, whereas in good lighting conditions the Nexus 5 performs better. And of course there is a problem that HTC has removed the optical image stabilization out of the M8 because it couldn't fit it in this version, which is unfortunate because videos can be a tad bit shaky. Okay, so in this part of the video what I'm going to do is my usual speaker comparison test. Um, here you have the M8, Nexus 5. Now what I'm going to do is play a video from my YouTube channel. In fact, it's the review video of the HTC M8. I'm going to play them both from the exact same time spot in the video. Uh, both phones have their volume maxed out. And here's a special thing to keep in mind. The Nexus 5 has its only speaker located here at the bottom edge. Okay, Whereas the HTC M8 has dual front-facing speakers, which should be obvious by now and they're significantly louder. In fact, the HTC M8 is the loudest smartphone I have ever used or reviewed. But you know what, well, let me just show you the volume test instead. You guys can see for yourself, or hear for yourself, rather. Micro SD card slot, which supports up to 128 gigabytes of external storage. As for internal storage, it comes in an option of 16 gigabytes. Okay, now for the HTC M8. And the micro SD card slot, which supports up to 128 gigabytes of external storage. As for internal storage, it comes in an option of 16 gigabytes or 32 gig. Now, obviously, due to my microphone I'm using, it's my DSLR microphone, which is pretty awful. But the point is, the HTC M8 is significantly louder, and not only that, the, sh the sound quality is significantly sharper, crisper, and bass is better. Battery performance between both devices is fairly similar. The M8 has a slightly larger battery. In about two and a half days, getting about two and a half hours of talk time on the phone and two and a half hours of random usage like Facebook and YouTube. So it's okay, you know, pretty decent for its size. And when it comes to the Nexus 5 battery performance, I'm getting about two days with two hours of talk time on the phone and about two hours of random usage, including watching YouTube videos, checking email, Facebook, and whatnot. Now when it comes to storage, the HTC M8 wins easily. You see, the Nexus 5 suffers from the same problem as all other Nexus devices. It has 16 or 32 gigabyte options of internal memory, but no option for external memory. You can't put a micro SD card slot in it. Whereas the HTC M8 has in internal memory options of 16 or 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and for external storage, you can put in a micro SD card slot, which supports up to a crazy amount of 128 gigs. Now when it comes to software and general interface, the Nexus 5 is running stock Android. It's very clean, very minimalistic, and easy to use. It's extremely responsive. Not only that, because it's a Nexus device, you're bound to get Android updates from Google fast. In fact, it's going to get the updates faster than any other manufacturer would. And you know, the interface itself is nothing too cluttered, nothing too amazing to boast about, but again, it's minimalistic, it's easy to use. This is Android as its purest form. And because it is a Nexus device, it's also extremely easy to modify. But the M8 has a pretty large advantage here. You see, the home screen is similar to the Nexus 5. Moving over to the right, you get your normal empty pages, you can customize whatever you want. But swiping over to the left, on the Nexus 5, you will get Google Now, which is also built into the M8. But you also get Blink Feed on the M8, which is your, you know, social networks and new subscriptions, and it's pretty clean and easy to use. The M8 has some additional advantages. For example, there's the option to turn on the screen or even unlock the screen itself without having to touch any buttons. There's a simple swipe gesture commands you can use on the screen itself. The Nexus 5 camera app isn't anything special, but the HTC M8 camera app is fantastic. It's easy to use. It has a crazy amount of customization options, including manual control, which is always great to have. Gallery app in the M8 also has a crazy amount of editing functions, and of course, HTZ Zoe, which basically takes a whole bunch of pictures and videos that you select, pre-compiles them into a nice montage, which you can select your own soundtrack or use one from the phone. And of course, there is the remote control app, which I find to be fantastic. When it comes to phone call quality on the M8, it's pretty decent. The person on the other end says they can hear me pretty clearly. You know, it's an average phone for in terms of phone call quality. Now when it comes to the Nexus 5, I actually find that the experience is better on the earpiece, and not only that, the person on the other end says it's a little bit clearer, which actually might surprise some people. Now let's discuss which phone is the best value for money. Now of course the winner is going to be the Nexus 5, but only if it's available for Google Play in your area, but that's pretty limited worldwide. If you're getting it from a mobile shop, if they're priced pretty similarly, I would have to say the HTC M8 is the better value for money. Now I'm going to tell you which device I personally prefer. And remember, for this part of the video, this is strictly my personal opinion. You might have a difference of opinion, and that's okay. But if I had to say which device is better, I would choose the HTC One M8. 
And I choose the HTC M8 because it can do everything the Nexus 5 can, and more. You see it has similar hardware and, well, better, except for the camera, that's debatable in certain lighting conditions. But you have the same software interface, HTC Sense 6 is very minimalistic and non-intrusive. The only real advantage the Nexus 5 has is that it's just so easy to modify. And not only that, because it's a Nexus device, it's going to get updates from Google much faster. But the M8 is a flagship device of HTC for 2014, so I expect updates for Android at a decent rate. Anyway, if you found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Also be sure to check out their individual video reviews, also in the video description and gaming demos and all the other good stuff. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.